What is your worst experience with bad neighbors? When my wife and I moved into our house in the summer of 2019, the neighbors on either side of us warned us about the people renting the house directly behind ours. Apparently they had been known to cause trouble and blow things way out of proportion, bordering on paranoia of everyone around them. We kept it in mind but had no issues for the first six months or so after moving in. Their house sits on a hill behind ours and so overlooks the majority of our backyard due to the elevation change. Well one night, morning, technically, at about 3am we wake up to ring notifications from our phones showing video from our front doorbell there's a man standing barefoot in a sleeveless shirt on our porch pounding on our front door. We give it 2-3 minutes just watching him on the app thinking maybe he's drunk and has the wrong house, essentially giving him the benefit of the doubt. But then we start to hear him say come out you fine psy, I'm gonna ref you up etc and he leaves the porch and starts to head around the side of the house towards our backyard. Considering we had no idea who this was, my wife now immediately calls the police as I move out of our bedroom towards the external doors to look listen for any attempt of home invasion. At this point our neighbors directly behind us throw a huge spotlight into our backyard from theirs. We're thinking okay cool they know something is up and they're trying to help us out by shedding light on our backyard. The cops arrive several long minutes later and knock. We explain the situation and they head out back to look around and get the scoop from the neighbors with the spotlight. It turns out that the spotlight neighbor was the one on our porch. He had jumped our fence into our backyard and up into his yard and then threw the light on. He told the police that several nights prior. I had let my puppy out into my own backyard in the middle of the night and because I was in my boxes, that I was trying to expose myself to his family because they could look down on our entire yard from where theirs sits. He then followed this up to the police with evidence which consisted of videos he had taken through our windows of my wife and I inside of our own home doing totally normal things like chores, watching TV, etc. Nothing inappropriate or scandalous, not that it would have mattered anyway. We were in our own home. Because of the elevation difference, if they went out of their way they could technically slightly see through our closed blinds due to the angle. So they had been filming us for no reason at all and expected the police to see this as reasonable. The cops came back in and my wife was devastated. A huge breach of our privacy of course and totally unfounded accusations as we had never done anything to anger these people. We hadn't even met them. The police told us just don't worry about it, if he tries something again just give us a call which wasn't the most comforting at the time. They moved out a few months later without any additional issues. My wife and I celebrated like it was a holiday when we saw the moving van in their driveway. Lived in a small apartment and my neighbors always cranked up their music to 11, like loud, loud, and until something like 7am, maybe later, but that's when I would leave for work. It was so loud that I couldn't hear my own TV over it. My neighbors and I would bang on the door but they would never open the door. It was like trying to sleep at a festival. Then at some point I found out they often left for a bar across the street but would just leave the music on. So I would pull the breaker for their apartment. But they would just come back at 5am and turn it back on. It was reported by heaps of people. But nothing was ever done. So at some point I would jam their lock when they went out so their keys wouldn't work anymore and they had to get the property manager in while the music was blasting inside. After a couple of times of that happening they were evicted. Maybe I'm the bad neighbor in this story. When I started my first job post college, I was thrilled to live by myself for the first time in my life. I had this beautiful one bedroom apartment in a solid part of town. Everything was great until 6 months later, when new tenants moved in next to my unit. I had a package go missing, a phone case. Amazon had posted a photo of it at my door, so I thought that it was just a fluke. Then it happened again, and again, and again. The office wouldn't accept packages, so I had to get my items delivered to friends places instead. Overall wildly inconvenient and the police didn't care in the slightest when I reported it. So I just figured I'd deal with it. Fast forward a few weeks, and I come home after being gone for less than an hour, to see that my doorknob and front door were scrapped up and the knob was barely hanging on. Long story short, I had been parking in plain view of this guy's window, so he was able to tell when I was home. I am 100% convinced he tried to break into my place, 
and that me coming home early interrupted him. I googled his name after I moved. I got it off a package at his door, and found that he was a convicted felon with charges that include grand theft auto, domestic assault, drug dealing, and an attempted break-in. Apartment building the upstairs neighbor's dog peed on their patio and it dripped down onto me while I was sitting outside reading. I yelled and ran to shower and when I texted them to ask them to take their dog out to pee in future they said it wasn't their dog and it must have blown over from somewhere else. What? Wow. That is next level. It is definitely a floor up. I had an upstairs neighbor let their dog take chess on their balcony. I'm guessing this was going on for a while as I started to notice a brown viscous substance leaking on my potted plants on my balcony. It wasn't until it rained that I could smell that it was dog shint piss. At that point it was very obvious. I got him evicted because it kept happening. That is why humans hate humans. I got along fine with my neighbors for 3 years. A mother and her adult son. They were both nice. But the son was very quiet sometimes he'd say hey and other times he didn't seem to recognize me. I assumed he was a recovering addict and didn't want to intrude. What ended up catching me though was when I listed the house for sale and found a family who was excited to make an offer they were coming for their third tour so they could show it to their extended family. Apparently during this tour, the son scaled onto my patio, which is a feat in itself, and pounded on the back door and window screaming at them to get out. He managed to break one of the windows before they cleared the property and called the police. When they contacted me, I learned he was schizophrenic and had a considerable history of violent outbursts including attempting to stab family members. Apparently he thought I had stolen the house from its rightful owner and was trying to sell it behind their back. To his credit though, he referred to me as a bodybuilder which I didn't hate. The family decided not to make an offer and I ended up having to pull it from the market. I used to live in a horrible apartment with paper thin walls. The people next door were a woman who looked like she was in her 70s and what I thought was her 30 something grandson. They would yell at each other all day, constantly blast their TV, and the smell of their cigarette smoke would waft through into my apartment and make the place absolutely reek. The worst was at night when the two of them would have loud sex. Which is how I figured out they weren't related. Every night for an hour creaking bed banging against my bedroom wall and the old woman moaning like a stuck pig. Nightmarish. I also think the guy kept track of my schedule and watched for me because whenever I came home or went out, even when I took out the garbage, he would be there outside his place, trying to chit chat with me while staring at my body and being completely gross. Lived there a year, but it felt like 10. Definitely the shed 19 year olds that lived next door to me when I was finishing up college that screamed at call of duty at the top of their lungs through paper thin walls every night when they got killed. Who also threw a pumpkin on the roof of my car, causing $3k worth of damage which is considered felony vandalism in Michigan. I finally got them to confess and basically gave him a stern talking to as a 22 year old that was just done with college nonsense at that point and told him I wasn't going to press charges as long as his insurance paid for it. Later that year when his roommate was flipping out about COD and yelled something along the lines of goddamn it fine hackers. Everyone is fine cheating. What the f is this bull sh? I hate this game. Bunch of fine losers and cheaters. Which was very clear through my bedroom wall while I was studying. So I didn't hesitate. Since it had been months of that. After he got done with his tantrum and said. Sounds like you just suck at COD, bro. I heard a crash of what sounded like a controller being banished to the shadow realm, and then didn't hear anything from him for a month. It was glorious. We rented a house that had another apartment in the basement. The lady who lived below us kept to herself for the most part so we didn't see her much. Part of our rental was a detached garage and she asked if she could put small deep freezer in our garage. We were using it for storage, so we were fine with it. After a couple weeks of having her freezer in there, it somehow got unplugged and she came and glued on us and wanted us to pay to replace everything. I understood her frustration, but we hardly ever went into the garage since it was only for storage. In other words, we definitely didn't unplug it and our landlord agreed, but she was pissed. She had a son in college who came home for the summer. During that summer he found a cat and brought it home. His mom said no cats inside, so he would feed the kitten outside. She was pretty wild. 
He left for school again in the fall and we noticed that the cat was getting very thin. We started feeding her outside in her usual spot. Around Christmas we bought a bag of cat food and I made a plate of cookies and left them both at our neighbor's front door. The next day they were both back on our porch. Root. Whatever. We continued to feed the cat because she obviously wasn't feeding her. A few weeks later the cat came to our door crying. She was trying to come inside. Super weird considering she was pretty wild and we had never let her inside before. I let her in and noticed she was pregnant and for sure about to have babies. I made her a little corner and she had babies the next day. We let her stay in the house with us but we knew we couldn't keep her. I went downstairs to talk to our neighbor. She said that her son's cat was a boy so the cat we had obviously wasn't his. I posted on Facebook to see if anyone was interested in fostering a cat and her kittens because we couldn't keep her. Her son saw my post on Facebook and got super mad at his mom. She then called the cops and said that I stole her cat and lied to her when she confronted me about having the cat in my possession. It was the stupidest, most frustrating thing that had ever happened to me as far as neighbors go. I have a few from the same neighbor who I'll call Linda. Linda would often have men outside the apartment building that she locked out screaming her name. But the best story regards a boyfriend Linda had who insisted my roommate and I call him the captain. About a week after beating him, we came home to a wedding announcement for Linda and the captain. Yes, his name was the captain on the announcement. Exactly one week later still, the captain was arrested outside our apartment building for public intoxication at 2am while screaming I've made a huge mistake. F you Linda, a huge mistake, I'm ruined. My mom has a neighbor who literally looks through her window to try to see into the house. She's had to call the cops on her multiple times. My first instinct is to spray the neighbor with water in the face, like training a dog. She has turned the sprinklers on before while her neighbor was standing out there. She said it was pretty hilarious. Still didn't stop her from coming back, though. He lived in the apartment right below my husband and I. It went from constant complaints to him calling the cops on us multiple times to him leaving threatening message on our car and front door. When we first moved in he was upset with the landlord for renting above him. Left plenty of unpleasant notes and interrupted quite a few times when we were talking to the landlord. When we moved in we only had a mattress and no other furniture but he kept calling the landlord saying that we were moving furniture around at 2am and had our TV at full blast. After the 8th complaint in 2 months of us still moving around furniture and TV being too loud we finally showed our apartment to the landlord. We literally didn't have a TV and still only had our mattress. Then the neighbor started leaving notes on our car telling us to keep it down and he even put in writing there needs to be no noise after 10pm or else I'll call the cops. We usually didn't even get home until after 11pm and we were respectful to make sure we kept things down because we knew that not everyone had our work schedule. So we tried keeping it down even more and there were so many instances when we'd be eating dinner or cuddling quietly, or even sleeping and he'd be banging on his ceiling our floor. After a few months he started calling the cops and it got to the point where even the cops told him to stop calling about a noise complaint because it's a landlord issue and every time they came they never heard anything. The last time they showed up I was asleep and my husband ended up talking to them and explaining everything. They suggested that we file a harassment complaint. Then the cops showed up at the coffee shop I worked at at the time and explained that they were getting almost nightly calls and they suggested to me to that we should file a harassment complaint against the neighbor. Then he started leaving threatening notes on our car and front door, and we kept hearing our doorknob jiggle. He claimed that he and a friend had sat outside our apartment for 2 hours and listened to all the noise we were making. He's a retired cop and will call in a few favors if we continue making noise. He knows where we park our car so we better start parking it somewhere else if we didn't want it to get damaged etc. We kept the notes and made copies for the landlord and let him know that this was what we were dealing with so we're just keeping him in the loop before she started getting real lacquer we're tired of this and if an old guy gets his shrock then just know that it's been a long time coming. The last complaint was when he ran outside to the landlord screaming that something needed to be done about us because he heard our bed squeak the night before and how dare he rent to some crazy college kids who are partying and having sex all night. The landlord finally told him to f off and stop being a bitter old man. Then the neighbor took a total 180 and we found out that he had decided to sue the landlord and was moving. Suddenly the neighbor kept offering us rides when one of us were walking. 
He stopped complaining and leaving notes but our doorknob kept jiggling and turning at around midnight and whenever we would check on our door we'd hear someone running down the hall as we'd approach our door. He eventually moved away and shockingly we haven't gotten a complaint from any other neighbor in the last 3 years we've lived here. The first apartment I lived in I had a neighbor that would try opening the door. Didn't hear it myself because I work nights but I came home early one night around 2am and he was trying to get. Had a huge argument with him and he stopped doing it after that. I'm guessing he thought it was just my two female roommates living there because he never tried anything after he knew I was there as well. Kinda opened my eyes at the time to the sort of sh women have to deal with. We had some neighbors that used to leave their garbage out in plastic bags the night before garbage day instead of putting it in a bin. Around here. That's just ringing the dinner bell for raccoons and other critters. Sure enough come morning there's garbage strewn all over the neighborhood. What the raccoons and skunks didn't spread around. The wind picked up the slack. Some of the people on the street kindly approached the guy and asked him to put his garbage in a bin. He told them to go F themselves. Thus began the garbage wars. Every morning of garbage day some people on my street would collect all the half-eaten man rotten trash from their lawns and toss it back into the dude's backyard. He would collect it, then dump it back on their lawns, or cram it into their bushes. People started finding half-eaten burritos and candy wrappers in their mailboxes. The street started to look like a slum. Police were called. Health inspectors. City by law enforcement. Each side was calling in whatever authority they could muster to get their enemy inch, the dude and his family. Amazingly his wife seemed perfectly pleasant. Lasted about 8 months then moved. Every once in a while I find a random margarine lid or piece of styrofoam in my hedge. And my mind goes back to those dark days of war. Thank you for your service. I lived in an apartment with slot of rotating tenants. And elderly lady moved in across the hall from me promptly started hoarding. I started to figure it out when her deck porch started to fill up with odds and ends furniture including but not limited to a roll top desk. She also yelled at me once for taking her key out of the front door and putting it in the mail slot. Anyway after a couple of weeks I started to realize I hadn't seen her in a while and started to smell something real weird. Turns out she had died and no one knew about it for a week hence the smell. Her family came and cleared out all her stuff about a week after that. This is Wisconsin in the winter and I had my good Doc Martin work boots outside my door because they were wet. They used one of my boots to prop open their door while they moved out and then stole them when they were done. I rented a flat with an ex and the upstairs neighbor was an absolute nightmare. Deadbeat dad who had his kid every weekend and left them screaming all the time. He'd blast music until sunrise every day even when he had his kid. Got the council involved. Nothing happened. Got child services involved. Nothing happened. He used to argue every Sunday with his ex about how he wasn't paying child support. They'd argue right outside our door. We were on the ground floor. The guy was unemployed. Owed the landlord a lot of money. And only left his flat to get groceries or drugs. He kicked off at me because my cat me out loudly once. They were crackheads. They had two kids. Were physically and verbally abusive to each other and were hoarders on top of it. Tried calling child protective services and the police over and over and was never taken seriously. They ended up burning down their apartment and caused thousands of dollars in damage to the rest of the apartment building because they were cooking meth. We had to move out, as did many others. The silver lining is that they finally got their kids taken away after that. The matriarch of my crazy neighbors nailed all of the windows shut in their house. Then removed the doorknobs and installed several dead bolts. This was to keep her grandkids home while she was at work, and everyone else out. Child welfare stopped by and were okay with this. The kids were able to get one window open without her knowing. And they would usually leave during the day and make it back before she got off work. Eventually there were maybe a dozen young adults living there too. And they all used the window as the main entrance. It unfortunately bordered my driveway. And was mere feet from my house. All hours of the day. People would be out there. Wiggling in and out of the window. People got tired of being cooped up and major fights broke out. I regularly heard bodies hitting walls or furniture or fists. Yells of well stop threatening and get your goddamn gun already. I have PTSD. And it was just day after day of trying to keep myself calm. The kids had a pneumatic BB gun. A lookalike handgun. And one morning shot up my neighbor's car. She left to work at a hospital early in the morning. Before first light. And didn't notice. When she shut her car door. 
all the glass fell out the windows. Later in the morning, he shot out a window in the school across the street, and a bit after that, he shot my husband in the shoulder. When we were outside planting flowers, he kept shooting. Even after the police arrived, the police called the matriarch, who unlocked all the dead bolts, took away the kids' guns, and drug them outside so they could be cuffed and taken away. The youngest was maybe nine. Since no one confessed or at it, and police weren't sure which of the three did it, they were released and not charged. Thankfully this act of physical violence against my husband got them evicted. After tearing up the house breaking all the windows and ripping out the electrical boxes and punching random holes in the walls, the kids went to the landlord's house with their lookalike handguns and shot up the windows in her house. Again arrested, but being juveniles, no repercussions. A couple of weeks later, her vehicle and garage were firebombed, but no one was charged with that. I'm so glad they are gone. I live in a wonderful neighborhood, not rich by any means, but the most awesome people. But it's hard to enjoy the community with that going on next door. I hope they somehow find some peace with this life. Eater. Wow. Why all? This blew up while I was sleeping soundly. Thanks for the awards. Dude pretended to be a reverend but was actually just a filthy effing hoarder. He insisted on wearing sandals all of the time, and whenever he left his flat, the entire stairwell would stink of century old and washed feet. Eventually, the beetles that had infested his flat crawled up and into our kitchen and then everywhere. Took months to get him evicted. F that guy. My neighbors create this toxic smoke out of their chimney. We suspect that they are making drugs. Had one that would basically steal our mail and other stuff from our porch and yard. Caught her once to confront her and she started yelling at me to stop attacking her and tried to say I was stealing her stuff. Ended up with the police getting called and us filing a restraining order against her. Moved into a crappy apartment in a building that was occupated by basically the worst people in the area. Pretty rural small town. Junkies. Alcoholics etc. I moved there because I don't have a driver's license and I needed to live close to my new job at a cafe. No buses in the area, except school buses, and it was relatively cheap. Anyways, one night when I came home from work, I met two of my neighbors by the entrance to the building. These two were living wall to wall with me, and I had listened to their drugged up Saturn alias more than once. They started following me up the stairs, not saying a single word, just following me. I rush inside and lock the door, when they start hammering at it, yelling, hammering their hands at the door so hard I thought they would break it, I yelled back at them what the f do you want, leave me alone, they stopped their hammering and the man said, with a fragile voice, we were just wondering if we could borrow your pee for a drug test tomorrow, I not so politely declined, told them to f off, and called the police, didn't live there for much longer, I'll tell you that, I've posted this before, our neighbor was tossing bags of her vomit into my yard for about a year, like 50 bags. Called the cops. Turns out she had an eating disorder she was hiding from her parents. My neighbor once shot both my dogs and his goat and made me bury both. One dog survived thankfully. He then tried to make us pay for a new goat claiming that our dogs attacked it. The goat had bullet wounds and no bite marks. I have a schizophrenic neighbor that has believed for years that I am hacking his electronic devices, scanning his phone, harassing terrorizing him, etc. Over the years he has claimed I've held an old man hostage in my condo, allowed blood to drip from my patio to his, and that I'm a terrible racist. He leaves notes on the inside of his car accusing me of these things. Guy owned 6 cars and kept them all parked on the street in a very congested block of apartments. Spent hours tending to them, and they somehow always looked rustier when he was done. If a leaf landed on one of his cars he would accuse the neighborhood of intentionally placing leaves on his car to annoy him. Probably our neighbors in our apartment that just let their damn dog bark all day long on their porch. Like I don't think that dog is ever inside even during the winter until it's night time. It's so annoying. A bunch of things with my ding dong neighbor. She had a large dog that hated my older smaller dog one day her dog ran into my yard and bit my dog she did apologize for this one did not happen again neighbor dumped her lawn clippings into my backyard had to ask her to stop and clean up her mess she decided to build a fence 
No survey. So I paid for a survey of my property. She started building her fence 3 feet over on my property. I had her stop and remove the fence. She was angry and never rebuilt it. I painted my house. She painted her house. Same color. I bought a new car. She bought a new car same color. Same configuration. There's other minor stuff. But that's enough. Odd person. Very odd. Found out they had an elderly cat who couldn't chew properly. And that they kept her outside and gave her dry food despite her inability to chew it. Poor creature showed up in our yard a bit ago. Nothing but skin and bones. Soaked from sleeping in the rain. Covered in fleas. Gave her some food and water. She's doing pretty alright now.